Hello everyone. This video was requested by a viewer, so I'd like to quickly thank you for the idea and for your insightful comments. Now I'm sure you've heard the legend of Atlantis, an ancient city that suffered a cataclysm and sank beneath the ocean. Atlantis itself doesn't seem to exist, but there are very real places where cities have been submerged. They include Dwarka in India, Xiching in China, and Port Royal in Jamaica. All of these places can be investigated today, and they inspire terrifying images of the events that submerged them. What if I told you the same thing can happen to a whole continent? Don't believe me? Well then, we need to go for a dive. In the seas surrounding New Zealand, there is evidence of a history far richer and grander than the stories of Atlantis ever hinted at. Come with me to Zealandia. New Zealand is a little nation to the east of Australia, separated from it by the Tasman Sea. It was one of the last lands to be settled by humans, and holds many secrets yet to be discovered. The variation and remoteness in its geography made it a difficult place for scientists to explore. Only now, in the age of digital and satellite technology, are geologists beginning to understand how New Zealand came to exist. You see, in terms of its geology, this country is like nowhere else on the planet. It's being chopped up by fault lines, blasted by volcanic eruptions, weathered by ocean waves and racked by mountain uplift. It features flat, low-lying plains, next door to mighty peaks and glacial valleys. It bears rocks of every type in bewildering arrangements. It's a complex and dynamic place, defined by the processes you'd normally expect in a large continent, not a few oceanic islands. As it turns out, New Zealand is indeed part of something much larger. In 1995, a name was proposed for this larger piece of the Earth's crust, Zealandia. A few years later, in 2017, mainstream media brought Zealandia to the public's attention when it was put forth as the world's official eighth continent. And now, in 2020, we can reveal the shape and structure of this thing in unprecedented detail. Everything I've just said can be summarized by this image. What you see coloured in is New Zealand, the country, and this is the continent. In terms of land area, 93% of Zealandia is under the water, visible only to satellites and sonar. Most of this area remains more than a kilometre above the surrounding seafloor, marking it out as a different type of crust. While most of the seafloor is built on dense oceanic crust, the rocks making up Zealandia are undoubtedly continental crust. If it weren't for the water being so high, this continent would have been recognised long ago. As for why it's mostly submerged, I will come to that later in the video. These maps present the latest views of Zealandia and the rocks that comprise it. They were published by GNS and incorporate a wide variety of data types, which you can view in individual layers. For instance, this layer shows magnetic anomalies, which point to different rock types under the surface. Rocks presenting a high magnetic anomaly tend to be igneous, while those with a low anomaly tend to be sedimentary. This layer shows all volcanoes that are currently active, or were active since the late Cretaceous period. And this layer shows straight bathymetry, the depth below sea level. You can clearly see things that were complete mysteries a few years ago, such as the fact that New Caledonia is connected to New Zealand, or this trench that separates both from the Australian continent. With the help of these maps, anyone can now go and learn about the geological history and significance of this remarkable area. Here's a summary of how Zealandia came to be. On the planet Earth there are two types of crust, oceanic and continental. 
Overall, the crust is broken up into tectonic plates, which may contain one type of crust or both types. These plates move over millions of years, slowly being reconfigured by movements in the underlying mantle. Around 400 million years ago, those movements allowed an especially large continent to exist, which we call Gondwana. It covered much of the southern hemisphere at the time, and it was still growing. Along the edge that would become Zealandia, accretion was taking place. This process involves pieces of oceanic crust sinking beneath the continent, which scrapes huge volumes of sediment from the top of them. All that sediment piles up against the continental border and becomes sedimentary rock. In this way, much of Zealandia's foundation was formed. Over the following 300 million years, Gondwana was joined by other landmasses to form the supercontinent Pangaea, which then broke apart again. All this happened at the bidding of the same tectonic movements that operate today. Gondwana re-emerged as the southern portion of Pangaea, and it too began to split into pieces. India shot away, and eventually collided with Eurasia around 50 million years ago. South America, Africa, and Antarctica all went their separate ways. Finally, it was just Australia and this young wedge of rock that remained joined together. But not for long. As we saw earlier, this area has a long history of volcanic activity. Many of those ancient volcanoes were triggered by the rifting that pushed Australia and Zealandia apart. This process forced the underlying mantle to melt, fueling chains of volcanoes and generating new oceanic crust, the floor of the Tasman Sea. 83 million years ago, the two continents were completely separate, but they continued to drift further apart. It's from this point in time that the animal and plant life of both lands diversified from each other. Uniquely kiwi creatures were introduced in the fossil record, including dinosaur species that are found nowhere else. At the same time, the crust of Zealandia experienced massive extensional forces, which means it was being stretched. In order to conserve its volume, the landmass had to become thinner to compensate for its sideways extension. You can observe this with a piece of toffee. If you hold the toffee from both ends and pull, it not only becomes longer, but it becomes a lot thinner as well. Consequently, the crust supporting Zealandia is thinner than normal continental crust, and that's why most of it is submerged today. It sank to its lowest point 25 million years ago, long after the dinosaurs died out. Some experts say that Zealandia was completely submerged at this time, while others argue that a series of tiny islands remained to carry on its biological legacy. Did these fossils represent animals that rode out the flooding, or did they migrate to Zealandia after it re-emerged from the waves? This is just one of many mysteries that still remain around the hidden continent. Of course, I'm leaving out plenty of detail, partly because the formation of Zealandia is still not fully understood, and partly because I don't want this video to be too long. Now that we're back in the present, I just want to wrap up by giving you an overview of this area's geology. When it comes to New Zealand, the overall geology is a mixed bag. In broad terms, it can be represented by terrains, where each terrain is a distinct block of rocks with similar age, origin, and composition. There are 9 or 10 terrains currently recognised. As far as we can tell, they extend out to sea as well, forming the body of Zealandia itself. Terrains located here comprise the Western Province, which contains the oldest parts of Zealandia. Over here, they are collectively called the Eastern Province. In between is a belt of plutonic rocks known as the Median Batholith. 
Over millions of years, the belt was built up by magma rising into the young crust and crystallizing just before it breached the surface. Massive domes of granite and diorite have since been exposed by erosion for the world to see. This picture is complicated again by the tearing alpine fault, which has offset the terrains by about 500 kilometers. Over in the western province, rocks are mostly sedimentary in nature. They were deposited at the bottom of the ocean, long before any animal walked on land, and later accreted onto the edge of ancient Gondwana. Some volcanic and metamorphic rocks are also found in these terrains, indicating a period of geological stress associated with the formation of Pangaea, when all known continents were squashed together. The oldest rocks in New Zealand are found here, and they contain adorable trilobite fossils, each just a few millimetres long. Meanwhile, in the eastern province, things are arguably more interesting. There are more terrains here with a greater variety in rocks and origins. Some of them are sedimentary units that formed after Zealandia split from Australia, and in some places they bear rich coal seams or oil fields. These terrains also contain evidence of the complete, or near-complete, drowning of Zealandia 25 million years ago. Fossils from around that time can be collected in places like Hakataramea Valley, and they are clearly the remains of sea dwellers. Other terrains in the east are made up of volcanic rocks, such as those underlying Auckland and the Taupo Volcanic Zone. They remind us that volcanism is not a new trend in the north. Older terrains exposed in the south tend to be overprinted by metamorphic processes. They were once buried deep inside the crust, but the weird rocks within them are now being brought to light by uplift along the Alpine Fault. The most spectacular formations among them are found in the Southern Alps, the highest mountain chain in New Zealand. There is even this rare formation represented as a terrain, the Dun Mountain Ophiolite Belt. In essence, an ophiolite is a slice of oceanic crust that has been forced up and joined with a piece of continental crust. This particular one is remarkable because of its length and the range of rocks it contains. By exploring its full length, you can see all the layers that make up oceanic crust. Going from seafloor sediments down through the underlying basalt and gabbro, igneous rocks, all the way into the greenish peridotite that was once part of Earth's mantle. It's truly a fortunate country that has all this variety to offer. As I have hinted, there is plenty of exploring still to do, and many mysteries surrounding the hidden continent of Zealandia. Its history is not completely understood, and neither is its composition. Thanks to the ongoing work of geologists, however, we are slowly building up a more complete picture of the hidden continent. If you'd like to learn more about it, head to Etuhra and check out these fantastic maps by GNS. You can find a link in the video description below. And thank you very much for watching this presentation. More videos are on the way, so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out. Also, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions, comments, or requests for future videos. Thanks again, and good luck with your studies.